The reason why most people don't feel so vibrant, so energetic is because they are lacking water. The more watery we eat, the less energy we need for digestion. Eating regionally is not only good for ourselves, it's good for the whole too. What is good for the individual must be good for the whole, and what is bad for the individual must be bad for the whole. Willkommen beim Rohkost, einmal eins ihr Rohkostverrückten. <lacht> This was back in the days when I started my first YouTube channel about my raw vegan diet. This was how I uh, started in each and every one of the videos. And I'm wondering where's Joey filming? Like, am I here? <lacht> in today's video, I'm we will too, gonna by the way. explore how do we eat in alignment with Mother Earth and simultaneously in alignment with ourselves. And I believe these two must go hand in hand. What is good for the individual must be good for the whole and what is bad for the individual must be bad for the whole. And this is one of the... <laughs> <laughs> be careful, don't fall into the tent of the neighbors. Um, this is one of the most important criteria of systemic design and this holds true in the realm of nutrition too. Uh, an area which deeply fascinates me since 2011. In 2011 I made a crazy shift in my life before that like a couple of days ago we were joking about my super super sh shitty diet before i was really eating like junk food 24 7 and then in 2011 i made a <laughs> joey's laughing <laughs> i made a significant shift in my life where almost everything that is present right now uh, got started so let's explore how does the ideal diet for ourselves and for the planet look like what That was it. All I can say is I look like no money and the only thing I know is you. I owe it to you, 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 I owe it to you, you. Ananas, ananas, ananas. <laughs> wow, eat the rainbow. Eat the rainbow. All right, let's dive into my three principles for eating in alignment with the whole. First one, fresh. When we eat in a way where as little time as possible um, was is passed between this fruit being on the tree and me eating it, so I get the maximum. Uh, Uh, maximum quality of food. If we want our food to be as fresh as possible, it just makes sense to eat regionally. Like if our food was shipped from the other side of the planet, of course, more time has passed and uh, the less the less fresh it is. So eating regionally is not only good for ourselves and for the quality of food that we eat, it's good for the whole too because it lowers our ecological footprints since not a lot of energy is uh, used for shipping, transporting, um, preserving our food and so on and of course the destination and this is one of the like really essential design criteria for custodia for the place that we are um, bringing into reality is to grow our own food because if I'm really living immersed in my own food forest I can leave this dragon fruit on the tree until the moment I pick it I slice it open and I eat it and one minute passed between being on the tree and it being in my stomach of course this is The North Star. When add-on, of course, it doesn't only matter like how much time has passed between the harvest of the of the food and me eating it. Uh, another important criteria is 
what happens in the meantime. Of course, if I pick the banana from my tree and then I fry it as a, as a pizza and goreng, what the local people do, then of course there's not much left uh, of nutritional value inside the banana. Um, so eating as unprocessed as possible is uh, uh, plays an important role too. That's why we eat most of the things that we eat just like raw, how they are, like fruits, veggies, nuts. Um, of course, if there's a desire to eat something cooked, we are not like super dogmatic. Um, a, a, a steamed sweet potato or steamed broccoli is uh, like still very close on the on the on this on the scale of like ideally growing it on your tree and eating it immediately. And on the up, opposite side of the scale would be like something that's canned or jarred and sits on the shelf for you like years. And the closer we are to this end of the scale, I think the more we are thriving and the better it is for the for the planet as a whole even uh, interesting experiment what we're doing right now while living in a tent we don't have a fridge of course there's like one main fridge that we are using sometimes if we have too much of one particular fruit and we cannot eat it so it's good to have this opportunity but most of the time we don't need a fridge because we eat the things like so unprocessed that we don't need to preserve them I want to see your slamming skills. Ready to see the slamming skills? Yes. One, two, three. Huh. Oh. That was already open. Crack it open oh, now. <laughs> Touchdown. Oh. Principle number two, less dense. The more watery we eat, the less energy we need for digestion. The reason why so many people feel so tired after lunch is because they eat stuff that doesn't contain a lot of water and as a result requires so much effort of our digestive tract that we will have no energy left. <laughs> and we can only pass out, like typical <laughs> siesta after a really heavy lunch. But if we eat things like this, coconut meat, by the way, has around 65% of water content. Joey, do you know what else has 65% of water content, approximately? Mm. The human body. So we are basically No, the human body has more. No. 80%. Hmm? 80%. For for newborns, but for adults it's around 50, 60, 70, like that. Are you sure? Yeah. I just, okay. I just checked it. If you're older, your your body contains less water, but uh, I think we we are really like coconuts on legs. And that's why we should eat coconuts. Are you a walking coconut? I'm a walking coconut. And oh, nice. Do you want to know what else has 65% water content? What a minute? Durian. What? Mm -hmm. Durian and coconut meat are pretty much humans. That's why we should eat them. <laughs> okay, and what about watermelon and pineapple? Watermelon is like super high. I, it's like 80, 80 or 90. 90, yeah. 90 or 95. I think watermelon and cucumber have eaten like 95. They are the, the most, wa more, most watery. And yeah, the, the, the more water our food contains, the less digestive energy we need. So if I, if I just had a watermelon for breakfast and I'm like, after an hour, it's already digested, it's already through and uh, like um, you're hungry a, again it's amazing and I'm, and I'm hungry again and then i eat coconut meat which has a little bit less water and therefore um i'm 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 satisfied longer water is really the most important um nutrient especially high really high quality water um the reason why most people don't feel so vibrant so energetic is because they are lacking water they are not drinking enough and they are eating foods that really stuff them that contain like not enough water and therefore like yeah we are our, our like the incredible sophisticated machines our bodies are we cannot we cannot run smoothly if we are lacking water i don't drink any like regular water at all like no tap water or bottled water the water i'm drinking is the water that like 
that you're eating. That whole food's contained. It's coconut water, it's watermelon water, it's papaya water, it's pineapple water, like it's cucumber water, it's tomato water. Like the water in fruits and veggies got filtered by the tree they were growing on. So it's so pure. It's it's more pure than any other water you can get. Like oranges, grapefruits, like all these all these fruits that contain really high water, they are infinitely better than buying bottled water. And since we're eating so many fruits and veggies, we don't need to consume any any like bottled water, tap water, whatever, and we are hydrated the whole day. Joey just remarked that uh, it's important to say that regular water is not only like a little bit worse than coconut water, it's really detrimental because of all the shit that is in it. It's super dead. It has like, there's like really nothing in it and it's detrimental to your body. So eat fruits and veggies. And what we're gonna, what we're gonna do now is because Leo just arrived, we're gonna prepare one of my favorite dishes and Leo loves it so much. It's a raw vegan coconut pudding. And we're gonna do a little spin today with some mangoes and some pineapples and yeah. Passion fruit. Yeah, passion fruit. It will be epic. Let's, let's do it. Now. Now. Yummy, who wants to have some pudding? Wow. Yeah. Mmm. 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 Oh, 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 wild, wild. No. <laughs> Oh, all right, friends. I already, already quite late. I spent the afternoon in Paul's. Um, Custodia is uh, growing and manifesting, and more and more beautiful people are joining. Um, if what we are doing here resonates with us, with you, and you want to either uh, join our special container in Poland in August or in Bali here in December, you have the chance until Sunday, June 9th, to apply. Um, I had an extraordinary call today. Shout out to you, Stefan. Um, wow, so aligned, so beautiful. Like, there's really something emerging. Tomorrow will be the next call. Um, all further information is down below to our incubator for building and birthing the more beautiful world. Ah, oh, that was a good one. Nice. <laughs> and to uh, complete our three principles for eating in alignment with uh, ourselves and the whole. Um, the third principle for me is pure. When was the last time you ate a tomato? Just, just pure, like with nothing else. Without salad, without bread, without salt and pepper, like just a tomato. It's delicious. It's so fucking delicious. Like this is how we inv invite it to eat. Like, most of the, most of the dishes that we eat are plain mono meals because things taste so much more intense of course after a while of retraining our taste buds to uh, leave all the highly processed and overly stimulated food like like lots of spices with salt with refined sugar um with uh with oil and so on like after a while of of really getting used to again to the finer tastes just the tomato by itself is so fucking delicious for 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 dinner we had uh, we had fresh cucumber it was such a good cucumber like even the smell we prepared it and she was walking by me and i was like wow the smell of cucumber amazing mm. we had some cucumber with a um with a nice how can i call it was it a raw vegan gazpacho yeah or was it a dip or something in between or just some things in the blender i don't know it was really good it was avocado and tomato and a little bit of onion and uh, some nuts along with that so this like this is how we eat like just a couple of ingredients 
snacking them together for uh, for breakfast it's always fruit mono meal it's watermelon or it's papaya or it's mango or um yeah and this simplicity this purity really connects us with the intensity of life again and and the richness and the richness and the, like and the minimalism of like mm. really connecting with this tomato connecting with this papaya connecting with this one type of of food of course like the occasional nice raw vegan treat when you're at a restaurant is uh, is nice too but more and more the longer i'm on this journey the more i appreciate the simple mm. things and if we if we need less stimulants like all the like the two other um principles are integrated even easier because if we value something like this like we eat regional uh, we eat unprocessed we eat watery and we live on an on ecological footprints that are putting less burden on the planet and we are thriving we are thriving and things become simple things become easy yeah without feeling a lack of scarcity but instead full abundance this concludes our journey through the topic of nutrition one of the essential design criteria for building custodian for building this very special place because each one of us eats and let's do it in a way that not, not only gifts us with the energy we need in order to really serve serve uh, the emergence of the more beautiful world it was a beautiful day thank you to you joy for this really really fun adventure mm -hmm. um yeah see you in the next video bye bye bye, -bye. <laughs> wait there's more i have a homework for you mm -hmm. um what are the three ingredients that make up most of your of your diet of how you eat like what are the things that you eat most often like really check in with yourself in an average week or month what are the three things that you eat most often And if you feel the calling, put them in the comments. Mango, Word. pineapple, and papaya. Mango, pineapple, and papaya. For me, it's definitely coconut. Uh, banana. I lied, to be honest. And and papaya. Right now, but it always changes. Like the seasons are changing. If I would it depends. Have, hey? you know, if I would, uh, would have answered this question like a month ago, it would be durian, mango steam. And coconut, and coconut, always coconut, always coconut. And Because then, we drink coconut every day. Yeah, and we eat coconut every day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a good answer. So maybe coconut is the only thing that we eat on a consistent. And bananas for me, personally. banana all year round. Oh yeah. Every time, bananas are always good. Yeah, and these times there are coming more more nuts again, cashews and peely nuts, mm -hmm. replacing the. The good durians Durian. that are transitioning out of season right now. Mm. It's fine too. Yeah. More veggies. Okay. All right. It's good night. Uh, say good night. Final. Final good night. Sweet dreams. Mm -hmm.